Hi, everybody. As always, it's Thursday, Swapy Webinars. Alexander, thank you for introducing me. Just, just a quick recap of uh, I've, I've been helping uh, businesses to get registered in Europe for the past 10 years. For all European sellers or, or sellers who are outside of Europe selling it, we see the changes and we, we see that kind of volat volatile atmosphere on the market. The online business is booming, e-commerce is booming. Talk today is two topics. I'm going to start with a short and easy one and then diving into more complex. The first one is that uh, for all of, all of uh, our listeners who are selling on Amazon and receiving payments, there is a change in payment service provider so that would be less returns less uh, accountancy time and you know having only one registration so Hi, everybody. As always, it's Thursday, Swapy webinars, and I'm very, very glad to have uh, with me today Alex Chernyenka. Hi, Alex. Thank you. I, I Joining us today, it is our second webinar together with you, right? Yeah, excited to be here again. And, you know, hi to everybody who is watching, listening to us live, and maybe those who will be listening later in the recorded version. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Alex Chernenko is owner of Chernin Call Company. Uh, he's a, it's a business consultant and company formation specialist from Ireland with 10 years experience helping clients worldwide to register companies to sell in Europe. So uh, since our last uh, webinar, some time already passed. So what, what news do we have? What changed since like, I think half a year already passed? Yeah, well, kind of, we've seen we've seen the the Brexit finally kicking in mm -hmm. uh, already. Uh, so that was you know some changes to the UK uh, and European uh, company registrations transactions, and now we have another big changes that are coming, which is uh, global European VAT changes that are also been postponed to July. So kind of the last six months and probably the next three months is a is a transition period across many areas, including European companies, European compliance, VET, and now we see it even, even further with, with more kind of restrictions. So I think, you know, for all European sellers or, or sellers who are outside of Europe selling it, we see the changes and we, 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 we see that kind of volat volatile atmosphere on the market, but positive, you know, people are, are actually growing their sales with everything in lockdown. We see e-commerce industries booming. So I think for, for our uh, attendees today it's it's a it's a positive time despite everything else that happens and you know on on, on there's bright side and there is always there is always a bright side and we we try to focus on that absolutely online business is booming e-com is booming uh the last statistics from 2019 was uh, that in europe is only 16 percent of online business uh, all the other sales were from offline, but I think when uh, uh, statistic companies will gather the info about 2020 and 2021, these uh, numbers will change dramatically, dramatically. And this is a huge potential for all the companies in the e-com uh, world, for service companies like we are with you and for e-com sellers. So uh, what uh, info have you prepared for us for this webinar, Alex? Uh, well, I have a couple of slides because I believe, you know, rather than looking at uh, e e e yours and my face for, for, for the entire webinar, it's going to be not as attractive. So I have a couple of slides that I wanted to share and, you know, it, it's going to help with a bit of uh, visuals. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm going to, pre I prepared some interesting content basically to dive into the topic and then we could, we could go back into the conversation and, and question and answers. Okay. Let's do it. How does it sound? So, it uh, wonderful. and I hope everyone can hear me. Okay. I have a, I have, a, I have upgraded my microphone since the last webinar, so it should be a good audio. Well, uh, Alexander, thank you for introducing me. Just, just a quick recap of, uh, I've, I've been helping uh, businesses to get registered in Europe for the past 10 years. And, you know, there's a couple of different 
the kind of direction or professional help that we do. Uh, the registration companies is one element, but then helping with uh, European VAT registration compliance and trademarks is actually quite a popular also division that that sellers come to us. And, you know, uh, from what I understand, sellers like to deal with a company that does a whole package of services. And, and that's why I believe VAPI is also popular with clients because, you know, it's not just a particular service, but uh, they like to, to, to cover a number of aspects. So what we're going to talk today is two topics. I'm going to start with a short and easy one and then diving into more complex. The first one is that uh, for all of all of uh, our listeners who are selling on Amazon and receiving payments, there is a change in uh, payment service provider program. What the changes is actually talking about is that everybody who is using classical bank accounts to take money out of Amazon will not be affected. But for those who are actually using a payment provider, uh, if that payment provider is not on the list of approved Amazon uh, services, they will not be able to receive money. Uh, and essentially, the current list is quite short. And from popular services that would be known to European uh, sellers, uh, I can I can only list two would be kind of world first and Pioneer, and then the rest is more more towards the Asian part of the world. Uh, TransferWise is not there yet. They're planning to be doing so. If if any sellers are using payment providers, they should be looking into either changing it to an approved one or switching to a classical bank account. And the new rules that Amazon will be enforcing, uh, also starting in, in the, on the 15th of July, are actually saying that you know they will not be accepting uh, bank details of payment providers who are not on the list. And the change already started last month. So anyone who is trying actually to register now a bank account of a payment provider who's not, Amazon is already not accepting them. And TransferWise is, is among those lists. I actually had a conversation with them yesterday. And they said that they're working with Amazon, but they they don't have the definitive time frame. And mm -hmm. after 31st of May, anybody who has uh, used a payment provider who's not as one will have to wait up to 21 days to take the money out, which is pretty much you know a long uh, a waiting time. So between now and the end of May, any seller who is uh, taking money from Amazon should be considering switching to an alternative provider or a bank account. Uh, and why they're doing it, you know, you probably be asking why why Amazon decided to do it. It's because they are would like to stop any fraudulent activity, and they would like to uh, to stop duplication of accounts. So anybody who is on that list is basically sharing information with Amazon on the owners of those bank accounts. So for those people who've been using Payoneer up to now, and they had multiple accounts. Uh, but they're all linked with a particular individual, for example, mm -hmm. Amazon will get that information. And Payoneer already signed up and uh, announced that they will be sharing. So everybody on that list will be actually sharing information to the Amazon. So if anybody has multiple accounts and is very much concerned, the only solution is not to use payment provider and use a classical bank account. So that's just something for, for the sellers to be aware of that this is coming and it's going to be enforced in the middle of July. Now, will we take any questions on this subject before we dive into the next one or will we keep the questions oh, to, the, to the end? Continue. Okay. Well, the second topic is slightly different, but it's also coming in, in, in July and it's changes to the responsible person and label requirements for uh, CE marked products. So some of you may be wondering, what is C mark product? Well, essentially, C marking indicates that the product has been assessed by the manufacturer and is safe to be used in the European Union uh, and uh, under env environmental protection requirements. It doesn't apply to all goods. I'm going to list uh, goods that will be falling into this category. And uh, it is required for product manufactured anywhere in the world that actually sold in the European Union. So the new change that is coming uh, on July 16th means that any, any product that falls into this category must, must be labeled with the CE label. CE stands for Conformity European, which is essentially Conformance European uh, from French. And it must also list the contact details of a European representative. So any manufacturers who've been kind of um, maybe importing goods from China or other non-European countries, and they had contact details of, let's say, American company or uh, China company, instance, that has to change. So all the labels essentially will have to be changed. 
and the new regular regulation you know kicks in uh it's already started but there is time frame until middle of july for everybody to change the labels change the contact details find the european representative if uh they don't have the european representative and basically prepare all the technical documentation it will be also illegal to actually sell the products without this information after the 16th so it's not just gonna you know something that people can do it's something that has to be done if it falls within this category. And for those who are selling also to UK, there is equivalent standards. So for the whole European, there is a CA uh, marking. Uh, what UK did after Brexit, they basically copied uh, what European Union had done and just rebranded it. So for products that are sold in UK and fall in the same category, they would have to have kind of actually two labels. So you see these two images, UK, CA, and C. So the product have to be displaying two of those uh, exact images on the label and they would have to cover, um, they would have to have European representative. Well, the good news that UK doesn't need a UK representative, it will also accept European representative. So if you manage to find one for European, you could use the same one for the, for the UK. And UK gives slightly more time. It's up until January next year for all the labels to be, to be changed. Until then, European labels will suffice. And now I'm going to talk about the goods that are actually covered under this. Uh, so some of you are wondering, you know... Does... In general, it means that all, all, all the goods must be uh, relabeled because everybody will, will sell and in UK and in Europe. It's but not... Everybody, but a lot of companies will do like this. Yeah, it's not well. Some of the goods they already have the C label, and some of the goods already already have European company or European representative, so they can continue work for it. Is it's for those who haven't had it up until now, or for those who nobody have listed. Has, nobody has UKCA, no. Yeah, well, UKCA that that's for sure, but that's part of the Brexit uh, that that everybody has to deal with, unfortunately. Yes, so uh, you, and that's why UK gave a little bit more time uh, up until next year. So the European legislation kicks in in July. UK allows it for the next six months to be to be still uh, kind of addressing the changes. So this, these are some of the categories of goods that uh, would fall into this. Uh, and I marked in bold specific ones that maybe would be more popular. For example, toys, teddy bears, plastic toys, all of that, electromagnetic devices and radio equipment. So anything that transmits radio waves would fall into this category. Measuring instruments, personal protective equipment, PPE, that is now a hot topic and many sellers, I believe, import PPE equipment into the European Union. Machinery, anything with IRAs all sprays, low voltage uh, electrical equipment. So they, they would all fall under this category. And as you can see, there, there are other ones that would be more industrial, more construction based, that would be maybe less popular among sellers. But this, this, this is pretty much a comprehensive list. And in the yellow color, I mark those that have additional requirements. They would not necessarily fall onto these rules. They would, they would be following slightly uh, different set of rules, but we're not going to cover the, the yellow part in today's presentation because it's, it's very specific and very technical. So uh, let's jump to a specific example. You know, this is a teddy bear, for example. And as you can see, it has uh, a UK company. It says it's made in China and it says CE. So after July, uh, this label will become illegal in the European Union because UK company cannot represent uh, essentially uh, a product in European Union. So mm -hmm. the UK uh, address cannot be used. It has to be changed to a European one. Mm -hmm. And starting from January next year, uh, this label is missing UKCA label. So it's also will, will kind of not be supported. So as you can see, there is two things that have to be fixed for this particular product, for this particular label. And by, by 16th of July, uh, address has to be changed to somewhere in Europe. And starting from January next year, there has to be an additional graphics, say, in UKC. So that just to gives you know, a, a good illustration of what uh, has to be done. Now, how to obtain CE marking? You know, somebody maybe maybe somebody already did it for their products, uh, but haven't looked in UK. But there are some sellers maybe who are just considering starting selling toys, and they've never dealt with CE marking before. So, you know, I, I'm going to list a couple of steps how to how to go about it, and it's very straightforward. So usually the first thing to check if your product falls into that uh, list of goods and check if there is any specific directives or legislation that applies to that type, because you could be selling toys, but you know, you would be falling into slightly different category. Uh, some goods would require additional certification. 
uh, and that would be, for example, for medical devices, for again, for for a specific uh, uh, machinery. So you would need to have additional certification by the official body. So you need to make sure that that is done as well. And what is good about C that it doesn't require a license. So if you see that your product falls into the category, but it doesn't require a specific certification by official body, you can just self-declare it. You can basically just put it without anybody else giving you any additional license or certificate. So it's essentially a self-declaration process. And then what, what uh, manufacturers need to do, they need to put together technical documentation and declaration of conformity, which has to be kept for 10 years in case if anybody else was to inspect it, or if there was was any incident. And for those who are based outside of Europe, they need to find and appoint a European representative. And of course, changes to all the labels. So the, the CE and or UKCA labels have to be affixed to their product or goods, and they have to include the European representative contact details. That's that's the basic steps that would need to be. How to, how to find the EU representative? Yeah, that's my next slide. Good, good question. So, who can be? I, I, I structured the presentation in, in, a, in a way that it would kind of one thing would lead to another. But first of all, who can be the, the European um, mm -hmm. resp responsible person or the representative? And it's basically a manufacturer of brand that are based in, Euro in Europe. It could be an importer, for example. So, some of the importers' uh, fulfillment centers, they also can provide this service. It could be any authorized representative that is established in European Union and who is basically appointed by the manufacturer or the brand owner. It could be also a certification body and it also could be Amazon uh, in, for those who are selling on Amazon. So uh, some tests in laboratories who are issuing certificates and official bodies, they uh, sometimes offer to become a representative, but not always. So this is a list of some of the certification body for specific goods that they have to certify, they also can act. And, uh, but you know, if you contact them directly just for representation, they probably will say no. So they usually represent only those who also get certified with them. So for toys, for example, they wouldn't be interested to represent because it's not something they, they do usually. But you know, for, for more specific goods, you can take this, this list and try to contact them themselves. For those who are selling on Amazon, uh, I'm gonna co co cover very briefly how Amazon does this. So uh, it's available only for FBA and brand owners. So for those who don't who use FBM or who don't have brand owners, this is not uh, the case. This, they charge 25 euro per month uh, per brand. It covers all assets and all products, mm -hmm. but it only covers Amazon. So if anybody is selling on Amazon and elsewhere, uh, Amazon a responsible person service will not cover. So it's it's only for those who sell only to Am only on Amazon and nowhere else and they have brand and they use an FBA. Mm -hmm. And it requires separate documents for each asset, but it covers pretty much the whole uh, portfolio. For those who say, well, I would like to become my own responsible person. I'm based in European Union. You know, maybe I don't need anybody else. This is just a very briefly uh, some of the responsibilities that responsible person has to bear if they act as a responsible person. And so uh, it's, it's a lot of text on the screen, but I'm going to read it out. It's collect the products uh, European Declaration of Conformity and all the technical documentation that demonstrates that the product is actually conformant. So it has to be a certain level of technical writing done. Mm -hmm. uh, and the documents, as I mentioned before, has to be kept for 10, for 10 years. It could be prepared by the manufacturer or the person who is actually selling the, the product. In some cases, uh, a responsible person has to inform of any risks and non-compliance to the authorities. So for example, if you know that your product is not compliant and you don't report, then you may get in trouble, of course. Uh, but that puts additional burden on the responsible person so they do their job properly. And finally, if any questions arise, the authorities will not be dealing with manufacturer directly, but they will not be dealing with brand directly if they're not representative. So the, the authorities want to deal directly with the representative if there is non-compliance case of if they just want to inspect the goods, you know, they could be doing it after a specific incident or they could be doing it uh, just you know, as a part of a routine check. And it would apply also to a recall process. So if there was a product that, that had some sort of defect and there has to be a recall done of all the goods. It has to follow a certain specific process. And usually responsible person kind of takes care of that. So some uh, 
brand owners and manufacturers decide to nominate themselves, but in some cases they don't want to take this responsibility and they want to outsource this and they hire somebody professional to act on their behalf. So uh, very briefly, I also wanted to cover what's the actual difference between uh, European conformance and UK uh, conformance. And the difference is pretty much just the way the legislation is named. What UK did, they, they kind of copied or replicated and renamed. So if, 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 we look, if we look at the, all the documentation that somebody prepares for Europe, the same documentation could be used for UK. The only difference would be is renaming the standards and renaming the reference to legislation. And on the left, we have all the legislation that's in Europe. On the right, we have equivalent to UK. So essentially just changing the name in the technical documentation will sort it out and then referencing the standards. But the standards at the moment in UK are exactly the same in Europe. So the only pretty much difference in documentation that sellers will have to do is change the, the legislation directive names. Sounds like not a very difficult task. Yeah, so if somebody has a document and they want to do it in UK, just you know, you use pretty much this list, make sure it's up to date and, uh, mm -hmm. and do it elsewhere. So what, uh, what we prepared for, um, for attendees of this webinar is that you know somebody always there are always sellers who want to do things themselves and there are always sellers who are looking for help. So for those who would like to do it themselves, we can send out a draft technical documentation and how to draft declaration of conformity. So if you guys would like to know how to basically do those documents yourself, what information has to be included, you can just fill in the form uh, using this link or, or, or you know, I, I guess the link will be provided and we could send you those samples so you can do it yourself. But if you don't want to deal with it and uh, you believe you are falling under this category and you need a European representative and you don't want to chance things, you want somebody professional, then we would be happy to uh, provide you the, the, the yearly service that would cover Europe, UK, mm -hmm. and pretty much you know making, making sure that, that you are compliant and all the boxes are ticked. So if, it, if it's something that would be of interest, it, we, I would be happy to, uh, to kind of receive those inquiries and we will keep the special price up until the end of April. Just mention VAPI when you, when you contact my- well, what are, yeah, I understand you or UK, you plus UK, and what is TOYS? Yeah, well, toys is usually kind of straightforward. So for toys, there is a, a lower fee because that's 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 something that doesn't require a lot of technical documentation and it's a straightforward. So for, for those sellers who are in this sector, it's, it's very straightforward process. Okay. That's why it's 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 a it's a much lower value. Now, what uh, another thing that uh, that I want the sellers to be aware of, and it's something that we, we kind of didn't talk before, is for those who who have uh, trademarks registered in in UK with the European company uh, after the Brexit, uh, there wasn't a lot of information being circulated. But you know, for those who had European trademarks with the UK company or had UK trademark with the European company, there also has to be some changes done. And the changes are basically as follows. So if a European company had a UK trademark, uh, the UK trademark requires to have a UK address. So if you have a, a UK trademark, but you're using a European company, you may consider updating the contact details to a UK address. And the similar circumstances would apply to a UK company with UK trademark, because in order to have a European trademark, you would need to have a European address. And since UK left, you know, many businesses kind of haven't really addressed it. They haven't changed it. They haven't looked into it. But it's something that uh, is officially from the 1st of January this year. It's not enforced uh, kind of a lot. There are some, you know, there's some, uh, how to say it? So the, the, the way the patent offices look at it is that, you know, if there is no issues and people leave it as it is, they're, they're, they're not going to get in trouble. But if there is any uh, communication required by the patent office to the trademark owner and the details is not correct, then a problem could arise. So I'm advising all the sellers who fall into these categories between Europe and UK company trademark that you update and make sure that you use the local address. And again, it's something that uh, that you know we could help with, or maybe you have additional company that you could that you could change the address to, or you could hire a, a, a local solicitor for that. But if you have a company and a trademark in different jurisdiction, 
I, I strongly suggest that you update those details. And you also do it kind of by middle of this year, because starting from July, we expect that more enforcement will happen. And this will happen across European directive. It will happen across VAT and tax compliance. And it will also happen from uh, intellectual property and trademarks point of view. So we expect that kind of starting from July, more enforcement, more fines, more penalties will, will happen. So between kind of now and July, I would advise sellers to be looking in this area as well. So that's pretty much, you know, all I wanted to share. It was uh, half, half an hour of information. Let's take some questions and maybe, uh, you know, look at particular cases. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much, Alex. Please, everybody uh, write down uh, the contacts and, and ask all the questions uh, directly if you have them. Uh, if you can switch off the presentation, yeah, it would be wonderful. So thanks again for uh, give, bringing up the, all these topics. They're very, very important. And this is what's happening in this year. And I think uh, every, every seller will have to spend some time to suit the new rules, right? Yeah, I mean, we we did we didn't we didn't discuss the v, the VET changes, but that's that probably take completely a separate webinar. So maybe, maybe you should, you can tell about just in short. Yeah, well, can I, the, the the European Union makes it easy for for European sellers to be. Uh, filing their VAT return. So instead of having a registration in all different countries, uh, one-stop shop coming, and those rules have been again delayed also up until July this year. So uh, uh, any seller who sells in the European Union, they could use basically a single uh, registration and to, 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 to send VAT returns for all European uh, jurisdictions just from one location, essentially. So that would be less returns, less uh, accountancy time, and you know, having only one registration. So, so these are kind of positive things again for sellers. But the they also come in. Uh, somewhere in the in internet, the uh, documents, how it will uh, work like in details. Yeah, I mean, this is something I've, I've been asked maybe to do a different uh, webinar on this because it's going to take pretty much an, an, uh, an hour to cover. We have to do it 100%. It's very important one. But today, yeah, I would say kind of the, the European representative, representative and the labels, they, they, this is something that that is is quite uh, quite short. And you know, in, in terms of let's say in terms of taxes, a seller could just ask accountant and they will do it for them. But when it comes to labels, you know, it means if you have already products and they're not sold, they would have to be taken back, relabeled. Uh, so so that kind of you know th this changes their more physical in a way that you know accountancy okay you just changed you just changed the way the way returns are filed that's it but when it comes to labels and products sellers have to do actually physical changes sellers have to sell everything what they have now very fast and order the new uh, new goods already according to the new rules right this is the, the best strategy to do of course well, that's 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 one way of doing it. Or if if not, uh, having different 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 labels, of course. So I don't what, see I what, don't see chat. Do we have any questions, Alex? Um, I I don't see it. Also, here one second. Let me check. Let me check it. No, not yet. I'll ask again. Uh, I have I have a question. So my question is, how do you see uh, the eco market in general, according to your clients? Uh, what what new uh, new strategies, new something new? What's happening now on the market? Uh, everybody understands that it's booming, it's growing, uh, but uh, according to the sales, according to um, some info about the market, more detailed from your side. What do you see? Can you share with us? Yeah, I'm gonna. What what uh, what I think is gonna happen? There will be more food products purchased online. You know, with uh, and the groceries. We already start seeing kind of grocery market uh, also grow, growing with with people being being remote. I mean, the the the, the personal. Uh, the, the personal goods, uh, you know, like shaving or anything that, that's considered kind of day-to-day -day, uh, day -day use, uh, those products are growing uh, rapidly. 
Uh, and what I also see now, and I and I think that's going to be a new trend: subscription-based shopping. Uh, mm -hmm. And there, there are companies who already try that. It's basically instead of just selling a particular product, there is like a monthly fee or an annual fee, and that ensures constant, consistent supply after a certain period of time. Mm -hmm. So I think if the, if the seller is in a in a category that that you know uh, uh, somebody has to buy frequently, making it easy for them to to switch to a subscription model could be a way to 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 keep a client on the long term. Because you know if you're selling something that a cl your client buys every two three months. Why don't you offer them subscription service? So that's something that uh, mm -hmm. sellers may look into. Uh, and that's probably something that will pick up as a trend. That, that's going to just one observation. But then closing, closing is now a challenge. In, in, in Europe, with the lockdowns, clothing mm -hmm. shops are closed. Uh, and it's considered that only essential shopping is allowed. Uh, but buying clothes, online is still a challenging thing for some people, especially with the sizes. So there has to be some sort of uh, unification of uh, sizes or, or perception of, you know, that if you buy this, it's going to fit yourself. And I think that is still uh, not done yet, but a company who figures it out probably will be <laughs> a billion, billion company. Well, okay. So uh, we don't have uh, questions now. Uh, I think that you have told everything very, very clear in a way. Or, and thank you, actually. Very important topics that you have brought to us today. Uh, I'm looking forward to hear for the second webinar about the VAT because VAT is also a very, very important one. And everybody is always worried about the taxes and how to uh, pay correctly because everybody wants to pay. But usually it's so difficult when you sell it in different countries that you are afraid to make a mistake. And if you explain in details how to do it we will be very very thankful to you alex yeah i i, I think i think we could we could do we could do something uh, next month if 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 this label thing applies only to certain goods and it doesn't apply to every seller vt is something that every seller has to deal with so it would be i, I guess a, a broader uh, relevance to the audience but yeah let's 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 book a date and, and i'll be happy to share some thoughts now for those for those who are not watching uh, uh, live and will be watching recording, if you have any questions, you know, just just you know, send send us an email. I'll be happy to answer them individually to anybody or or, or comments under the video, and you know, we'll be looking forward to help. Okay, and for those uh, who need help in uh, fulfillment all over the Europe. Please send uh, your questions to our website, wapi.com, and we will be glad to help you with any, any question that are connected with warehousing, stock control, uh, delivery, it's fulfillment, peak pack and ship, integration with marketplaces, everything it is about wapi.com. So stay tuned. Every Thursday, we've got uh, wonderful webinars. And probably very shortly, you will see another webinar with me and with Alex talking about the VAT. Alex, thank you very much for the webinar and see you soon. Yeah, well, thanks, thanks, Wabi, for organizing it. Look, looking forward to talk to you again. Have a good one. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Alex. Bye-bye.